Hello, my name is Andrea Bevilacqua. I'm a professor at the University of Padova in Italy. Uh, my research interests are in uh, the design of uh, radio frequency and millimeter wave circuits and in the analysis of uh, wireless communication systems, radars and the CDC converters. I am a member of the Technical Program Committee of the International Solid State Circuit Conference and also a member of the Solid State Circuit Society. This year I was invited to give a, a tutorial talk uh, at ISSCC 2020. And this presentation is a reduced version of that tutorial. Uh, please note that uh, a PDF of this mini tutorial uh, is available for free at the Society Resource Center. Uh, moreover, there are uh, other, <coughs> um, um, are other sources available to the Society members, uh, such as the uh, past uh, full-length ICCC tutorials and webinars. This mini tutorial is dedicated to integrated transformers. Uh, the use of transformer uh, in uh, integrated circuits uh, is uh, really uh, ubiquitous. Uh, they are used uh, in for the implementation of uh, fully integrated power amplifiers, frequency synthesizers, as well as complete uh, wireless transceivers, and also power management circuits. If uh, their use is so um, widespread, they must be useful, right? Um, so what can we do with the transformer? They provide galvanic isolation, so we can use them to um, perform AC coupling. Uh, we can use the transformer to achieve single-ended to differential conversion and signal and power combining. It is very easy to use the transformer to um, implement a phase uh, inversion uh, that might be useful in feedback networks. Uh, they have um, passive voltage or current gain, and related to that, they have a, an impedance transformation feature uh, that uh, is useful for the design of matching networks. If we combine a transformer with a pair of capacitors, we, uh, um, <coughs> we realize a higher order um, resonator, which is useful in the design of LC oscillators and filters. A transformer is nothing but two coupled inductors. Uh, we can do that uh, in an integrated form, uh, leveraging uh, several different uh, layout options. The first one is the stacked layout. Um, in this, with this option, we achieve uh, a relatively large magnetic coupling, and uh, uh, also we uh, suffer from a relatively large capacitive, uh, parasitic capacitance between the primary and the, the secondary windings. Moreover, with this layout option, it might happen that we have to implement the bottom uh, coil with a thinner metal, which impairs uh, its quality factor. We can avoid this by using a coplanar interwound layout, where it, we can use a thick metal for both coils. Another option is uh, the concentric coplanar layout, where we minimize the capacitance between the primary and the secondary windings. In this case, however, we achieve a somehow reduced uh, magnetic coupling. Transformers are widely used uh, in the implementation of uh, input, interstage, and output matching networks uh, because of their inherent impedance transformation feature. In the design of the matching network, uh, is uh, absolutely key to remember that uh, the um, parasitic elements of the transformer are never negligible and we need to embed them in the design of the networks. We can do that in a couple of um, different ways, as we will see uh, promptly. Um, the first example I would like to talk about is the use of a transformer to realize a single-ended to differential conversion. Um, ideally, the balloon should uh, um, should um, behave as an uh, ideal transformer. However, we have just commented that we cannot neglect the magnetizing and the leakage inductances of the transformer. So how do we cope with the parasitic elements of uh, uh, the device? Um, well, if we cannot get rid of them, uh, we can use them to our advantage. How can we do that? Uh, here there is an example where uh, we combine a, a ballon with uh, an inductively degenerated low noise amplifier. 
we can see that uh, <coughs> we can embed the parasitic elements uh, of the transformer in the design of the input network of the amplifier uh, by treating the input network as a ladder filter. Another option is uh, to use uh, a doubly tuned uh, network. A doubly tuned network arises every time that the capacitance is shunting the primary and secondary uh, turns of the, uh, of the transformer are not negligible. These capacitances can be uh, parasitic or they can be explicit. The um, impact of the uh, load resistance on the behavior of the network is quantified by this parameter QS. There are two uh, cases uh, worth analyzing. The first one is if QS is much larger than one. In this case, uh, the network has two parallel resonances and it behaves as a transformer. Uh, if QS is smaller than one, uh, then we have a degenerate case where, we'll, where we have a single uh, resonance and the network behaves as an impedance inverter. It's worth to notice that uh, uh, the behavior of the network uh, also strongly depends on this uh, parameter Xi, which is nothing but the ratio between the LC products of the secondary and the primary windings. The analysis of the doubly tuned network is in general quite involved. However, we can use uh, equivalent second order circuits valid in the neighborhood of the resonances uh, to simplify uh, the analysis of the uh, system. Uh, for the high Q case, the equivalent second order circuit is made of a shunt RLC uh, equivalent tank and ideal uh, transformer such that the network operates uh, on the uh, load resistance uh, by scaling it uh, by the square of the voltage gain of the equivalent ideal transformer. There are a couple of things uh, worth uh, underlining here. The first is, uh, is that uh, if C is equal to one, that is the primary and the secondary windings have similar LC products, then the voltage gain of the uh, equivalent uh, ideal transformer is equal to the turn ratio of the coupled coils. And this is true regardless of the value of the uh, magnetic coupling. The second thing is that uh, the uh, voltage gain of the equivalent ideal transformer has opposite signs uh, at uh, omega L, the lower resonance frequency, and omega H, the higher resonance frequency. The third thing to um, worth observing is that the voltage gain of the equivalent uh, ideal transformer at omega H is inversely proportional to the parameter C, such that the transformed uh, load resistance is proportional to C squared. We can also use an unloaded doubly tuned uh, uh, network as a resonator to build an oscillator. We can do that in a couple of different ways. For example, we can connect uh, uh, one port of the resonator to a negative conductance uh, to implement uh, what I will call as a one port oscillator. Uh, another option is uh, to um, close the feedback uh, around the resonator, hence obtaining a two port oscillator. Notice that topologies that combine both approaches are also possible. Uh, we commented that the doubly tuned network uh, features two um, resonance frequencies. How can we do that? Uh, how, how can we uh, use that in the design of an oscillator? Um, one option is to build an oscillator capable of um, operating at both uh, resonance frequencies, hence expanding the tuning range of the circuit. Another option is to tune the higher resonance frequency omega H at the second harmonic to decrease the 1 over F noise up conversion into phase noise. A third possibility is to tune the, the higher resonance frequency omega H to the third harmonic, uh, increasing the slope of the voltage waveform, thus uh, implementing the so-called class F oscillator. In this case, uh, we also have an increase of the um, third harmonic component of the tank voltage that enables the so-called implicit frequency multiplication. As an example of these techniques, uh, 
Uh, we have a look at uh, a paper um, presented at ISSC in 2019 that describes uh, a, an oscillator capable of operating at both uh, the resonance frequencies offered by a, a transformer-based resonator. The result is an impressive 40% tuning range at millimeter wave frequencies with very good phase noise. In the full-length tutorial, all the techniques that I briefly mentioned uh, in, in this talk uh, are explained in much greater detail. There we see that uh, in integrated processes, we have some limitations in the obtainable magnetic coupling and the turn ratio for the integrated transformers. This results in the fact that the magnetizing and leakage inductance are never negligible. So we need to um, uh, take this into account and embed them in our designs. We also see that coupling inductors is also useful because it allows to uh, decrease um, the uh, footprint of the coils and, and this is particularly uh, handy when we design lumped element version of distributed passive circuits. Uh, we see that uh, transformers are key uh, to amplifier design uh, because they provide uh, AC coupling, impedance transformation and power combining. Finally, we see that uh, although um, the use of a transformer doesn't result in an increase uh, of the quality factor of the resonator per se. Um, uh, Transformer-based resonators are useful in the design of low phase noise and wide uh, tuning range uh, uh, oscillators. Uh, please remember that uh, this uh, talk uh, is uh, available for free uh, on the Society YouTube channel, along with uh, other similar uh, mini tutorials. Moreover, remember that uh, on the um, Society Resource Center, uh, you have uh, a, a list of uh, past uh, ISCC tutorials and short courses available for free. Uh, being a member of the Solid State Circuit Society uh, has uh, several benefits. Uh, you can have uh, access to online tutorials, short courses and webinars. Uh, you can subscribe to the society uh, publications and you get uh, a registration discount uh, um, when you're registering uh, for uh, the SSCS sponsored uh, conferences. Along with this, you have many other um, benefits um, that make uh, joining the society worth. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to contact me. Thank you very much for watching.